Hey guys, welcome to another Will It Run video on the Trains with Shane YouTube channel. In case you haven't guessed it yet, my name is Shane. And what we have here is a Facebook Marketplace purchase of an Atlas EMD GP40 in CSX colors. I can't recall off the top of my head, but I think this might be the first CSX unit on the channel. We've had at least one or two Chessy units that I can recall off the top of my head. We had an SD40-2 by Broadway Limited um, a few months back on the channel, but I think this is the actual first CSX unit. So I saw this pop up on Facebook Marketplace and the price was okay, but it wasn't great. So I sent the message to the guy with an offer. Um, he accepted. I paid for it. Here it is. Um, it's missing the top lid. I'm not too jazzed about that, but it's got the, the case and the plastic insert, so I'm all right with that. Although, since it does have the plastic insert, we know that it's a little bit older. And as you can see, it's got Rapido-style couplers on it. Here are the specifics. So you can go look up the model number if you want to. Put our fingers back here. One of the reasons why I wanted this is because it said it was decoder equipped. So hopefully this thing should have a Digitrax DA120 decoder in it. So let's get this thing out of the box, take a look. See, our horn is a little mangled up here. Missing a couple of chimes. It's not too big of a deal. Definitely dusty. The story I got from the guys that he inherited these, I think from his grandfather. He had a bunch of other stuff. Some much older Bachmans. Some life likes. I think I even spotted one or two real old Mahano Yugoslavian things in his listings this is the only thing I wanted um, it was by far the newest definitely a little bit dirty it's been sitting for a while probably in its case with the lid missing decent ish grill details here not very deep molded in turbo exhaust dynamic brake fan here The uh, handrails are nice and sturdy, the stanchions, a little bit of give to them. We've got our road number here on our number boards here, 6318. Hood mounted, uh, not, excuse me, not hood mounted, cab mounted headlights, no short hood mounted headlights. Painted over classification lights, no ditch lights. No MU or air hoses. Molded on coupler cut lever. Okay truck detail. You can see with magnification. GP40-2. The, the numbering on the sides looks a little thick. The paint does. You can tell there's a, 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 a thickness to it. Doesn't look like we have a cab interior here. I can barely, no, maybe I can't. I'm looking for molded on windshield wipers, but I don't think I see them. No holes or provisions for sunshades or deflectors. Same story on this side here. There's our hole for checking vitals on our prime mover. Back of the long hood here, our tail lights. Looks like we've got a tiny bit of paint missing off of a couple of the molded in what should be grabs. I'm not real concerned about that. The uh, rear pilot, same as the front. Looks like we've got a couple of fake hose mold ends on this side. But all the handrails are there. Nothing's broken or missing. 
the only real damage that we have is the paint missing off of those back um, molded on grabs and our beat up horn. At first it might look like some of the bottoms of the, the walkways are, are missing but they're just painted in black on the bottom. Speaking of the bottom, woofta. I'd say that could use a tidy. So we'll probably have to do that. Atlas made in China. Standard split frame. So, pretty neat little unit. What do you say we get this onto a test rack and find out what it does or what it doesn't do? I'll see you guys over there. All right, guys, we are on the tiny disgusting workbench test track we are plugged into DCC plus plus EX with our little home built command station we've just put on track power we are using SRCP client on our iPhone to connect us as you guys have seen before I'm going to enter in let's try default number three Cab number three here, feeding it some power, nothing. No headlight. We're not buzzing or anything, so I think we probably do have a decoder in here. Let's try the cab number 6318. Let me load that in. Get you guys in here to show you that, 6318. Again, no headlight, no movement. Hmm, so what do we have? I know we've got power on the track because I've ran other locomotives on this today. Do we have bad power pickup, which is possible with the scongy wheels but we should have gotten something out of it go ahead and turn our track power back off here so we can rub a clean spot track power back on Still nothing. Try default three again. Still nothing. No lights, no motor. Okay, so a couple possibilities here. One, like I said, it could just be a power issue, or we could have a bad decoder, or we could have a decoder that just needs to be reset. So, let me get back over onto, well, not onto, but off of the test track. We'll take this thing apart, see if it does have a decoder in it, and we'll go from there. Let me get reset up, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, we have deployed the cradle. So let's get this thing open and see if we've at least got a decoder inside. I tried just pulling on this gently like they say you're supposed to to get it apart but it won't go so I'm going to use the box trick. You have to be kind of careful with this but what you can do it's easy to do if you have one of these you can just use the lid but if you've got an atlas of this vintage you want to rest the front pilot up against the side here and then you want to tap it on a surface. Your mileage may vary. Don't come crying to me if you snap your front pilot off because you were banging it on the table too hard. It's 
see we've loosened up here and the shell comes off we'll set that aside okay definitely looks like we have a decoder here I am not familiar enough with Digitrax decoders to know what I'm looking at here. Our motor is not bound up, it turns freely. Both of the copper contract contract contact strips are in place. Looks like we're going to need a Phillips to get this out of here. Let's see what we've got over here on the tool cabinet. We don't need to get this all the way apart. We just need to loosen it enough to get the the decoder board out for troubleshooting. Why are you taking the decoder board out for troubleshooting, Shane? Well, because I forgot to unclip this little light blocking surround here. Don't want to lose that. Because we're going to troubleshoot this Kind of like it was a DC only analog control. What we're going to do first is we're going to just establish that the motor itself and everything works. Probably helps spread this apart if I took the fuel tank off the bottom. Looks like that's held on with double sticky sided tape. Not ideal, but it is what it is. We don't need to split this totally apart. Just need to get it far enough apart to wiggle the decoder out of here. That nut came all the way off. There goes that truck. As Adam Savage says, any tool can be a hammer and most things can be a pry bar. So we're going to use a flathead screwdriver here. Gently pry on this. Again, guys, gently pry on this. You don't want to be snapping anything. Man, this, this is being kind of stubborn. We might have to take it all the way apart to get the decoder out. Okay, that's our other hex nut. thing is in here. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. Here's our board. Oh yeah, definitely DCC. And there's our motor contacts. there are our actual motor motor contacts I'm going to deploy the electrodes you guys remember these what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little bit of DC juice because the motors are DC either way it's it, they run off of DC voltage 
The only difference with DCC is that the track doesn't vary the current the decoder does. So in theory, we should be able to juice this and have the motor turn. Yep, I felt it. Let me dial up a little more here. If this thing isn't rotating freely, well, we would still have headlights. Or something could have smoked the decoder because it got bound up in here. You guys hear and see that? I'd say that's a successful enough test. We know that when you apply voltage to it, it does work. So we have a potential problem with either electrical pickup, which I don't think that it is, but we're going to clean all the stuff up anyway. We will install our decoder back in and see if we can get it to play nice. Now when installing these back in you want to be careful and I it, and it's hard to show here but you want to make sure your motor contacts line up with the bottom of the decoder and while this isn't a DCC ready um, it would it is kind of what you would call DCC friendly um, on a true DCC ready or even on newer DCC installed stuff you can just slide the decoder out without having to split the chassis or anything. Alright, let's get our hexagonal nuts back in here. Let's go in there. They are keyed to only fit one way. There we go. Hold that on the back with our forefinger. We're gonna get our Phillips head. Just snug it up. Don't need to run it down with a quarter inch impact. Three quarter inch impact. Again, same thing. Hold it down with our index finger so it doesn't go flying. Give it a couple turns and just snug it. Pushing the, the chassis together with your fingers first and not using the threads on these little bolts and nuts is, is helpful. You can tell how long it's been since I've taken one of these apart. I forgot. Leave enough room to get the trucks back in. Honestly, man, these are... Pretty crusty. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of resistance here, but there is a little bit. We'll definitely need to uh, clean up and lube these. I am going to do this off camera because you guys have seen it before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of very, very, very fine sandpaper. And I'm going to use it rubbing the gear on the back here to let the drivetrain do the work for us to start to clean off the nasties on these wheels. I'm going to do all eight wheels. I'll do that off camera and I'll bring you guys back when I'm done and when I've got this thing stuck back together. 
All right, guys, back on the test track. We've got the wheels all clean. Let me see if I can show you here. Very nice. Cab number 36 or 6318. No movement. All right, we're going to try number three. Also, no movement. Okay, so could still mean we have a bad decoder. We know we're getting good contact. We know the um, the wheels and everything are clean. We know the motor works. Um, I don't have DCC++ EX set up to where I can like run it through JMRI and try to do Decoder Pro or anything on it. So I'm going to switch from DCC++ EX over to my NCE Power Cab and we will go through the reset procedure there and see what happens. So I'll get that over. I'll get that switched over and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, guys, we have plugged in our NCE Power Cab. Most of you guys will be familiar with this, but for those who aren't, we're gonna go through a reset sequence here. We're gonna press our program slash escape button here and hit enter when we see use program track. There we are, use program track, enter. Obviously the clock's not right. We're gonna hit one for standard. detecting our manufacturer 129 I'm assuming that's Digitrax you can look that up online we're gonna hit enter again decoder version 109 enter again active address is going to be long setup address yes one We're not going to worry about the short address here. Activate this address. Yeah, let's just tell it yes. We can change this later. Here's our where we set up our long address. This is going to be 6318. 6318. Confirm it. Enter. Activate this address. Yes. Set config. Let's go through yes anyway. Direction bit, normal, enter, speed steps, 28. We'll be fine for what we're doing here. DC mode, enter, no. Speed table, standard, enter. One, because we're going to use the long address. Set up motor controls, we're just going to hit enter because we don't want to. Function mapping, again, enter. We don't need to change any specific CVs. And it takes us back to our programming track. We're going to hit escape, back out here. It's already set us up 6318. Let's see if we have any lights. Let's see, where's our headlight button right here? Looky there. Let's dial up a tiny bit of throttle, move our railer out of the way. But we have life. Look at the slow speed crawl on that thing. Let's dial it up a little more. How about a lot more? Stop. Change direction. Jeez, it's been so long since I've used this thing. Direction right here. Dial up a little more. And stop. 
Turn our headlight on. The rear headlight comes on when we change direction. Our front headlight comes on. Front, back, front, back. It does pretty good. moves out pretty decently all right that's why I keep this around so will it run yes it will what do you say we uh, put Humpty Dumpty back together again What do you say we do a little better job putting Humpty Dumpty back together again? There we go. Move our power cab out of the way. Rerail. If you don't have a Kato Rerailer, just buy one. See if we can get some low angle shots here. Whoop, whoop, easy. Slow speed is pretty decent. This thing could definitely use a little lubrication. Headlights and number boards working and we're just creeping along. We can speed her up a little bit if we need to and we'll stop. All right guys, that's gonna do it. Looks like she runs. So it looks like we got a good deal here. I want to thank you guys for joining me on one of the longer Will It Run episodes we've had lately. Seems to be that whenever we buy some piece of DCC equipment used, this happens about 50% of the time, but sometimes you get lucky and we did this time. So with that, guys, I want to thank you for hanging with me. Go watch some more videos. It looks like viewership has been down lately. I don't know why. We've got more... Um, more subscribers than we've ever had before but yet we're only getting about a third the views we used to get since about january so go watch all your favorite videos again and until next time stay safe and i'll see you soon